Hello everyone, my name is Vasily Olenik and in this video we are going to take a look at how minimal APIs compare to control-based APIs in .NET. If you like this kind of content and would want to see more, please feel free to subscribe and leave a like, this would help me a lot. So why should we care about minimal APIs at all? Long story short, minimal APIs are an alternative method to building APIs in .NET. They have lower overhead, which makes them perfect for students, new developers, juniors, etc. Minimal APIs are more performant than controller-based APIs, since they don't have this overhead in them, and are an interesting tool that you should definitely add to your toolset. In my opinion, minimal APIs have a place to be in every developer's toolset, for two main reasons. First, are high performance services. Minimal APIs are more performant than controller based APIs since they don't have that overhead, which makes them perfect for this kind of scenarios. And the second one being small apps where you need to create a proof of concept, you need to teach to a junior developer or to a student how to build an API without spending too much time or showing him the whole behemoth, which is the MVC framework. You don't want to scare new guys with the whole full framework from the get-go. Disclaimer here, using minimal APIs does not mean that you are building small applications. It's rather a different application model that you are using, which in my personal opinion, is just as strong as its MVC counterpart. Now, let's see why do minimal APIs fit those two different, but at the same time, similar scenarios. Historically speaking, in .NET, we've been building HTTP-based APIs using the MVC framework for a very long time. We've had alternatives like Nancy FX or some other small stuff, but the whole industry was dominated by the MVC framework. But some time ago, Microsoft introduced minimal APIs as an alternative to building HTTP-based APIs, which was really hot received by the community. I'm usually open-minded about new stuff that I encounter, and minimal APIs seemed like a really appealing feature introduced with .NET 6. However, for our development team, they were lacking some fundamental features like model binding, validation, API versioning, open API spec and of course filters which were really a hot topic at the time. By the way, I have a video on my channel where I go through what filters in the MVC pipeline are. I'll leave a link somewhere over here. Uh, now back on the topic, we did not decide to jump on the hype train from the get-go and let the pathfinders test out the tools and test out the waters. So it wasn't really a total valid alternative at that point. Of course, you could go around the limitations with some Scooby-Doo type magic, but you would have the leftover feeling. However, .NET 7 changed a lot of that. Basically, a lot of missing features were introduced so the feature set right now is more or less comparable to controller-based APIs. However, minimal APIs have less code and are more performant, so it's hard to argue against that. Fast forward some time, we basically have a couple of APIs running in production based on minimal APIs, which are doing their job just fine. Minimal APIs are not the way to build APIs, they are a way to build APIs in .NET Core. The main purpose, in my opinion, was and will be optionality, so you have options on how to approach different problems. So, to sum up, if your goal is to build small, lightweight APIs, or APIs for high-performance system, or teach new guys on the team the basics of .NET Core, minimal APIs are a great option in that. Okay, so let's take a bird's eye view on how we would usually build controller-based APIs and how they would work. As a, this is a bird's eye view, all the internals and all the specifics, we will cover them in a later video. In a production environment, we would have API clients that would run HTTP requests, which would head our API. 
go through the middleware pipeline, go through the action invocation pipeline, get to the controller. The controller would call a service layer, which would call in turn a data access layer, and then get to a database or a resource or, I don't know, an external API, etc. The data access layer usually consists of an entity framework context with data models that map onto DB tables. The service layer usually exposes DTOs. Basically, that's the approach I would adhere to because we can change the internals without affecting the clients or the consumers of our API. And basically just return the JSON representation of the data that we have in the database. Let's see how the controller-based API differs from the minimal API approach. From the birthday view, we'd have an API client, same as here, which would run HTTP request, which would get through a middleware, then through filters, which were initially missing with .NET 6 and were added to .NET 7. This would map to methods that are not necessarily defined in our program, .cs class, we can structure our minimal APIs to have more or less like mediator-like type of structure, which would run then in turn against the service and basically the same flow as before and return JSON representations. Okay, so from the bird's eye view, the changes between these two approaches is basically over here in the minimal APIs, we don't have all the boilerplate code brought by the MVC framework and all that overhead. Uh, it is truly a set of minimal building blocks that we could use or put together to set up an, an API itself. And in case we need more feature, we just bring more building blocks and structure it the way we really want. So for new guys, it's easier to understand since you have just a minimal set of building blocks. For experienced developers, it might not seem that obvious, but when a new guy comes to the team and if he's not been developing with .NET for so long, when you try to explain him what a controller is, what a constructor is, what's, where does the dependency in the action uh, configuration go, etc, etc, it becomes overwhelming for a new guy just to get into it. It is not so hard since they can get a working API a minimal with a minimal set of building blocks with a minimal functionality really fast and then try testing and playing around with it to understand all the other concepts. For experienced guys, we don't really see that benefit that much, but we should not underestimate it. Don't get me wrong, minimal APIs have all the building blocks that the controller-based API do have. So basically you could build the same and even better API with the minimal approach than the controller-based approach. They offer you the ability to configure just what you need and how you need it, which is liberating for an experienced developer. Now, since we've seen how things work and how things are organized from a high level, in our next video, we will start building our Habit Tracker API.